Last time on Dragon Ball Z, after an unpleasant encounter with their king, Beerus the Destroyer believes it is time for the Saiyan race to be eradicated. As he sets in motion the events that will lead to their planet's destruction, a child of fate is set off on a path towards salvation. However, his path would cross with the God of Destruction sooner than they think. The fates of a mortal and a god are forever changed now. Ascension into Godhood What if Goku was raised on Beerus' planet? Out in the vastness of space, the God of Destruction Beerus believes that it's time to eliminate the Saiyans. Following his meeting with their king, Beerus is annoyed with the Saiyan race, but he's feeling too lazy to do anything about it. Instead, he orders that upstart mortal, Frieza, to wipe out the Saiyans for him. With a satisfied look on his face, Beerus pats himself on the back for a job well done before returning home and falling asleep. He had deserved this nap. However, only several days into his nap, Beerus stirs in his sleep. He bolts himself awake, recalling an incredibly vivid dream he just had. No, it was a premonition, a vision of a being with fiery crimson aura. Beerus jumps out of bed, walking past a surprised Whis. He didn't expect Lord Beerus to wake up for another 40 years. Ignoring his attendant's snarky comment, Beerus summons the groggy oracle fish. The god questions the seer about a prophecy it had given him shortly before his nap, as the fish recounts the prediction. Very soon, a mighty warrior would appear that would become Lord Beerus' greatest rival. However, when Beerus asks then for the name of this almighty rival, the fish struggles to remember. It had completely forgotten. All it could remember was that his rival would be a Super Saiyan God. Beerus doesn't recall ever hearing anything about Saiyans having gods, requesting Whis to take him to planet Vegeta immediately. Perhaps that wayward king had some insight into this matter? Whis giggles as he beseeched his master to remember what he did before he fell asleep. Beerus is confused as Whis reminds him. Unfortunately, Beerus had ordered Frieza to eradicate the Saiyans before he went to sleep. Beerus's eyes widen panicking as he tries to figure out what to do now. Rage and frustration overtakes the Destroyer God. He'd have to punish Frieza severely for this transgression. Whis reminds him that it was he who ordered Frieza to kill the Saiyans, but Beerus ignores his comment. He demands Whis to look around the universe for any remaining Saiyans. The Angel checks his staff for answers until he finds one. Somewhere, there was a small band of Saiyans following the son of the late king, Vegeta. Before moving on, here's a word from our sponsor. The studio behind Cyberpunk Edgerunners have brought the first ever mobile game adaptation of your beloved anime, the legendary Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann, will now be available worldwide. The game opened the closed beta test on June 1st. Hurry, as the doors to this limited opportunity are only open for a limited time. On the first day of participation in the closed beta test of the game, you will unlock a treasure trove of rewards and exclusive benefits that will enhance your gaming experience like never before. Don't miss your chance to be a part of this epic adventure. Click the link in the description to join me on this thrilling experience. Beerus jumps up. Surely that prince should know something. Whis requests that Beerus wake a bit longer for his staff to finish its search, but Beerus doesn't want to waste any more time. With a sigh, Whis teleports himself and Beerus to a far-off planet. Right in front of the deities were several Saiyans feasting on the remains of one of their defeated victims. Most of the Saiyans in this group have no idea who these strangers are, some of them even approaching Beerus as they grin maliciously. Looks like they found their next meal! Prince Vegeta, who had just turned around to see who arrived, immediately recognizes who this pair of travelers are. He panics and orders his grunts to apologize immediately, but it's too late. The God of Destruction's purple aura bubbles to the surface as he labels these punks annoying, placing his hand over them and erasing them on the spot. Vegeta and his remaining lackeys, Nappa and Raditz, were left utterly speechless as Whis reminds Beerus why they came here in the first place. Beerus lets out a quick, oops, as he apologizes to the terrified Prince Vegeta. He didn't mean to annihilate his men like that, but they should have known their place. Without missing a beat, Beerus questions the prince if he has ever heard of something known as a Super Saiyan God. Vegeta shakes his head, 
He had never heard of such a thing. He's heard of the legend of the Super Saiyan, sure, but nothing about a god. He turns to Nappa and Raditz, who both shrug their shoulders. They didn't know anything either. Beerus' aura flares up once more as the Saiyans panic. Beerus was annoyed again, pondering if he should kill off these useless Saiyans and finish the job of eradicating their entire species. Prince Vegeta falls to his hands and knees, swallowing his pride as he pleads for his life. He could feel Beerus' overwhelming presence. It hadn't changed at all since he saw him reprimand his father on planet Vegeta. The prince begs Lord Beerus to spare their lives as he shoots an angry glare at Raditz and Nappa, who quickly go down on their hands and knees as well. Beerus rubs his chin. This prince had learned his place rather quickly. Very well. Beerus asks one more question. Did any of them know of any other Saiyans that may have survived planet Vegeta's destruction? Nappa recalls Paragus and his brat, but there was no way they'd still be alive. They were banished to a deserted wasteland long ago. Vegeta remembers his younger brother, Tarbul, who was banished as well for his low power level to a far off dump called Planet Tech Tech. However, before Vegeta can speak, Raditz shouts out first. He had a little brother. He was very young, less than a year old, but his parents had told him he was being sent away a few weeks ago to a remote planet far away. His name was Kakarot. He thinks anyway. Beerus scoffs. He has no use for a baby. But he thinks about it. None of these Saiyans seem to know anything about a Super Saiyan God. But if he raises a Saiyan child from scratch in the ways of the gods, maybe, just maybe, could he create a Super Saiyan God? Beerus turns away, telling the Saiyans that he will spare them for now. He was feeling a bit generous today. He thanks the long-haired child for this information, departing with Whis in a massive beam of light before Vegeta or Raditz could question what he meant. Vegeta and his squad were left there, stunned at what just happened. They needed to report this back to Frieza immediately. As they travel through a rainbow of colors, Whis asks his lord where he'd like to go next. Beerus closes his eyes, feeling the energies of the vast universe until he hones in on one thing own presence. Beerus instructs Whis to take him to a specific quadrant of the universe, and once they arrive, the god catches an incoming space pod like it was a mere baseball. Whis applauds his master for the magnificent catch, and as they return to Beerus's planet, they open the pod. Just as they had expected, within this pod was a Saiyan child who plops out of the ship. The toddler cries profusely, which startles and annoys Beerus. This was going to be more troublesome than he thought. Whis inquires why they need this child as Beerus explains his thoughts. Why search for a Super Saiyan God when they can make their own? However, Beerus decides that he'd rather just go back to bed. The cat yawns as he instructs Whis to raise this little brat while he takes a nap. Whis nods, lifting up the crying Saiyan child as he welcomes him to Lord Beerus' planet, his new home. His training was about to begin. As they weren't aware of this child's name, Whis needed to call him something. He considers looking up his staff for this child's original name. Upon recalling a certain legend of a monkey that became a god, Whis felt it more fitting to name this child of destiny Son Goku. Over the next few years, Whis taught Goku a specialized lesson plan to maximize his growth as a martial artist. Goku wasn't particularly strong. In fact, as far as Saiyans were concerned, he was incredibly weak. Yet, under the tutelage of Whis, this changed quickly. Goku became strong, incredibly strong, unfathomably strong, almost to an absurd degree. By the time he was five years old, Goku had already become the strongest Saiyan to have ever lived. At this point, Whis had become the closest thing to a father figure Goku had, while Beerus acted more like a stern uncle. Goku was an unruly child, but since Whis and Beerus were far stronger than him, he knew that he had to show them respect. However, Beerus does show some of his affection for the child as they bond over their love for fighting and food. Sometimes, Beerus would fight Kakarot in order to see how his training was progressing. At some point during his early years, Beerus is particularly tough during one of these training sessions and hits Kakarot a little too hard. Goku had gotten a bit too rowdy and confident 
and Beerus, a little peeved and eager to show this brat his place, flicked his forehead. However, despite holding back immensely, Goku is knocked unconscious and nearly killed. Thankfully, Whis is able to tend to his wounds, and Goku makes a full recovery. Beerus was incredibly worried about Goku's health, although he would never admit it to Whis. Yet, the angel noticed that Beerus would check up on Goku every night while he was recovering. Beerus had regretted his actions for once, so he decided to make it easier on the boy, both in training and in general. There was another unforeseen consequence of this incident, however. Goku had received so much trauma to the head, he had completely lost his memories. Along with this memory loss, his personality completely shifts to that of a happy, silly kid. No longer was he the same feral, chaotic monkey boy from before. With more support from Beerus and a whole new attitude, Goku excels in his training. Whis also made sure he studied various disciplines such as math and science so he could become a well-rounded person. Beerus mocked the child for having to do simple schoolwork, but he ended up getting roped into taking lessons as well. Whis believed it would be a good way to motivate his student. Goku wasn't a fan of this at first, but he was told that this too was a part of his training so he warmed up to it. Many years passed and Goku was now 13 years old. He had trained with Beerus and Whis for so long, he has not only unlocked God Key early on in his life, but completely assimilated with it. Goku had long since had access to Super Saiyan God, but he doesn't need it as a transformation anymore. He can use the godly power in his base form alone, akin to the Super Saiyan God Beyond state from the manga. Whis is happy with Goku's progress but not nearly as delighted as Beerus. The cat god is pretty confident with the Saiyan's growth, to the point that he even considers grooming the boy to become the next god of destruction. He was already incredibly powerful, skilled, talented, and very resourceful. Surely becoming a candidate of destruction was the next step to becoming his rival? However, Beerus is well aware that Goku is far too soft and naive right now to consider becoming a candidate. We suggest that it might be time to start showing young Goku the rest of the universe. If he was too naive, then perhaps it was time for him to depart from this planet and learn as much as he can from the universe. Beerus ponders for a moment before agreeing. He hadn't checked up on any of the mortals for the past decade or so. Besides, he was getting rather bored staying cooped up on this planet for so long. It was about time he stretched his legs a bit and discovered some more tasty food. The pair approach Goku who is busy chasing the oracle fish. Using a well-timed after image, the child is able to snag the seer from behind. Whis commends his pupil on being able to actually catch the oracle fish as Goku snickers. It was nothing! The boy asks his masters if they need anything as Beerus reveals they are going to take time off from training. Goku's eyes widen as Beerus informs him that they'll be traveling across the universe together. The boy was excited. He had never actually left Lord Beerus' planet before. He had read about Universe 7 and some of the planets within it. This was a brand new experience. He couldn't contain himself. Goku squeals in glee, jumping on top of Beerus' head as he shouts out for them to go already. Beerus shouts at Goku to get off as Whis chuckles, tapping his staff as the trio are surrounded by a pillar of light. The grand tour begins as the godly beings travel to several planets. Their first stop was a planet with a bug-like race ruled by a tyrannical king. When the king, unaware of their true nature, attempts to order their execution, Beerus nearly destroys the planet in anger. However, Goku steps up to calm him down by defeating the king and his legion of soldiers. The tyrant is disposed and the former king, Atla, reclaims the throne. Acutely aware of Beerus' position in the universe, he immediately orders for a feast which manages to appease Beerus. Atla and his queen thank Goku for restoring their kingdom, promising to create a monument in his honor. Beerus gets jealous and orders them to make him a bigger, shinier monument of himself, which the royals quickly agree to. Afterwards, the trio arrive on a planet filled with deserts and outposts. When they arrive at one of these outpost settlements, the three are bombarded with merchants who are overly eager to sell them their overpriced goods. Beerus is disgusted at the outrageous prices, demanding to know where their king is. They are escorted to the castle of this planet's ruler, Don Ni. The Don welcomes the travelers to his kingdom, eager for them to spend their money as quickly as possible. However, 
Once he learns from Goku that they don't have any money, the king orders his soldiers to take out this trash and strip them of anything valuable. It doesn't go well. Not even the strongest hired muscle, Legic, can touch these intruders. Once again, a tyrannical king is disposed. Beerus is eager to have an extravagant feast, but he is stopped by Goku. The child asks him to look around as Beerus noticed how starved the people of this kingdom are. At a moment of After a moment of silence, Beerus decides that he isn't hungry anymore. They could find some good food elsewhere. Goku smiles brightly as they depart once more. Their next stop was a planet filled with creatures of gigantic proportions. After taking some apples bigger than their entire bodies, the godly beings stumble across an enormous beehive. They enter it in search of honey and stumble across an army of bees. They are chased out of the hive by the enraged swarm straight into a giant spider web. However, Beerus gets annoyed and akai's the entire web as Goku makes quick work of the spider. They inadvertently save the hive's queen bee and, as a reward, the gang are gifted with an ample amount of honey. The three gorge themselves on apples and honey until they've had their fill. They say goodbye to their new bee friends as they leave on a stream of light once more. They visit more and more planets across the cosmos. Each time, they scare the local inhabitants who proceed to give them food out of fear. Sometimes the food isn't good, or they do something that angers Beerus. However, Kakarot is always able to calm down Beerus and convince him to change his mind and prevent him from destroying these planets. As a result, more planets and civilizations are spared, which Whis notices. He's glad that the boy is having a positive influence on Beerus. Many civilizations start to view Goku as a kind of little angel who shields them from Beerus's wrath. The trip continues for several months until they arrive on a rather cold planet with massive towers surrounded by soldiers. Goku asks where they are this time, and Beerus chuckles. This was their last stop. He wanted to see someone he knew and speak to him for a moment before they returned home. Before Whis can pull out his staff and search for Frieza, the trio are quickly surrounded by a platoon of soldiers. The troops hold up their blasters, aiming directly at the gods and demanding they state their business. Beerus is peeved at this blatant disrespect as his expanding aura pushes everyone around him off their feet, cracking the ground beneath them. They were here to see Frieza, but if they wanted to be killed so badly, he'd be more than glad to give them what they want. One of the soldiers, a beautiful man with blue skin and green hair, finally recognizes the god for who he is. He apologizes profusely to Lord Beerus, as he quickly escorts the trio to Lord Frieza's castle. Within his throne room, Frieza was busy sipping a glass of wine when the door swings open. Frieza demands to know who has entered his throne room without his permission, as Zarbon stutters loudly that Lord Beerus has arrived, seeking an audience. Frieza nearly falls off his hover chair in surprise, as he welcomes the God of Destruction. Frieza is stunned to see Beerus again so soon, but he is even more shocked when he sees a little child with them. A child with a tail. Was that... A Saiyan? Beerus tells Frieza to teach his soldiers some proper manners before introducing him to his student, Son Goku. The kid bounces up, yelling out an enthusiastic, Yo! Whis reminds him to show his manners as Goku quickly bows in respect. Frieza, still stunned at what he sees, asks Lord Beerus if he heard that right. Was this monkey really his student? Beerus nods. He decided it was about time for him to have a proper pupil. He had been training him for many years now, and his power has become astounding. Whis mentions that it was actually him that trained Goku, but Beerus ignores this. The god declares that the reason they are here is because he would like to see how far Goku has grown. He wants his pupil to fight Frieza. Frieza is taken aback. Was this really necessary? Beerus reiterates that this is a test to see how far Goku has come, and to see how he will fare against the strongest mortal in the universe. Or would he rather not agree to Beerus' simple request and settle with being erased instead? Frieza gulps, reluctantly agreeing as Goku leaps in joy. He didn't think he'd get to fight someone strong today. The Space Emperor steps out of his chair, landing on the floor as he warns the child to be prepared. 
Otherwise, he'll die. Goku smiles, remarking that he always takes the fight seriously as he suddenly vanishes into thin air. Frieza couldn't even register what just happened, as Goku appears behind him, striking him in the neck as Frieza's eyes turn white. Goku is left surprised, as in one attack, Frieza is knocked completely unconscious. Whis chuckles as Beerus yells at Goku to wake up Frieza. He came to see a fight, not a fainting act. A scared Goku grabs Frieza, slapping him awake as he apologizes profusely. He thought he was stronger than that. Frieza regains consciousness, and upon realizing what just happened, he is completely incensed. He pushes Goku off, declaring that he had underestimated him. He would be transforming to his final form right from the start. Frieza roars as the entire castle starts to shake from the pressure. Goku giggles in glee as bright purple light engulfs the room. Frieza emerges from the glow, revealing his final form as he announces that the real battle would begin. Frieza charges towards the young boy with his fist outstretched, but the attack never connects. Goku is simply able to dodge the punch, grab Frieza's arm with his tail, and leap away. Frieza continues launching a barrage of punches at Goku, but every single strike is dodged with ease. When Frieza fires an onslaught of death beams, each of them are smacked away by Goku's tail. As anger rises within the Emperor, only disappointment grows within Goku. Was this really all Frieza had to offer? Even when Frieza bulks up to his 100% full power state, he is still unable to land any hits. In an act of desperation, Frieza charges a massive death ball that collapses the castle's roof. As a brief falls around them and the soldiers run in an attempt to save their lives, Frieza roars as he throws his strongest attack. A blast capable of destroying an entire planet. Goku realizes that if he dodges this hit, this planet will really be blown up. Beerus and Whis wonder what Goku will do as the boy takes a deep breath. The death ball lands true, and Frieza momentarily thinks that he had finally won. However, his jaw drops as his massive ki blast is dissipated into dust. Goku is now covered in a crimson aura, his eyes opening to reveal a deep red as he stared daggers into Frieza. The Emperor is frozen in fear as he muddles out a single question. Was this the Super Saiyan of legend? Goku lunges forward at lightning fast speed punching Frieza straight in the gut as the entire wind is knocked out of him. In another single hit, Frieza is rendered completely unconscious from the shock as he falls limp to the floor. Goku had won. Beerus and Whis congratulate Goku on his win, but the Saiyan child shakes his head. He didn't feel like he won at all. That wasn't really a fight in his eyes. There was never really any challenge to begin with. He didn't even need to use his Super Saiyan God state, he just wanted a quick way to protect the planet. Beerus smiles, impressed at Goku's ridiculous growth. In just a few short years, he had surpassed the strongest mortal in the universe. He had really become something akin to a god. The Frieza Force are completely shocked at their master's defeat as Zarbon orders his troops to pick up their lord and take him to the nearest healing chamber. Several soldiers comply with the order as Goku notices that a few of these soldiers have tails on their backs, just like him. The, the biggest of these soldiers whispers something to his comrades as all three turn around to face Goku. They lock eyes on the boy as Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz see Goku for the very first time. Raditz calls out for Kakarot, recognizing his unmistakable hair, yet the boy doesn't recognize that name at all. Did he have him confused with someone else? Raditz can't believe that this was really his little brother, as the prince grinds his teeth in frustration. How dare this lower class trash be stronger than him? Frieza was supposed to have fallen to his hands. As the Saiyans quickly leave with the rest of the soldiers, Vegeta swears to himself that he would face Kakarot again someday. And when he does, he'll obtain the strength to defeat him and put him in his place. Goku is left more bewildered than anything else. Were those guys really Saiyans? We speaks up, mentioning that Goku wasn't the only Saiyan survivor out there. The godly child recalls that from his studies that the Saiyans were wiped out when he was just a baby and he never really bothered thinking anything else about them. 
Although, now he wonders if there really are more Saiyans out there than he realized. Beerus yawns as he tells Goku to hold that thought. All this traveling and eating has left him pretty tired. It was time for them to return home and get some rest. Without much else to say, Goku grabs onto Whis's hand as the three deities leave in spectacular fashion. Later on, as Frieza recovers within a healing chamber, his eyes jolt open. The entire medical ward trembles as Frieza steps out, his face contorting in a fierce, unrelenting fury. As the medical staff look on in terror, Frieza orders his soldiers to search the universe for anything that can possibly make him stronger. Weapons, techniques, it didn't matter. More than anything, he wanted revenge on that monkey brat for utterly humiliating him. Frieza vows to have his revenge on that despicable Son Goku. Some more time passes. Son Goku continues growing, training diligently as Beerus is now more active in his training as well. Whis notices that he's never seen Beerus to be so motivated before. He hasn't taken a nap in years. It seems as if Beerus was becoming more excited as time went on, eagerly anticipating the day where Goku would be able to give him the rival he's always been seeking. Now that he had been exposed to the universe at large, Goku was expected to come along with Beerus and Whis during their visits to other planets. He accompanies his mentors as Goku continues to forge his relationships with the inhabitants of these planets. This also includes new planets he hadn't visited before, such as a green planet, planet Namek, and the hazy planet, planet Yardra. Goku bears witness to Beerus destroying planets, learning that some planets must be destroyed in order for new life to begin. It is the duty of the God of Destruction to maintain the delicate balance of creation and destruction. Goku even meets the Supreme Kai and Kabito during his travels. The Kais are surprised that a Saiyan is being trained by an angel and a God of Destruction, but they are incredibly glad to see how kind-hearted Goku is. Shin sees Goku's immense power and his even bigger heart. He has high hopes for the Saiyan. Shin even notices how Beerus is less irritable than before, thanking Goku for domesticating Beerus. Goku doesn't know what that means, and Beerus gets mad, nearly sealing Shin away in a rock. By this point, Goku is now an adult with a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. Beerus believes that he is finally ready to start his training as a God of Destruction candidate. Goku is exhilarated to start a new chapter of his training, but Beerus grins maniacally. This wouldn't be the same gentle training he's used to getting from Whis. Beerus warns his pupil that he would hold nothing back and that he might die from this training. Yet, Goku's determination does not waver in the slightest. In fact, he's ready to accept and face this challenge head on. And so, with a chuckle from Beerus, the destruction training begins. At first, Goku struggles with Beerus' brutal, hands-on approach to training. Unlike Whis, Beerus had no issues pummeling him to an inch of his life if it meant drilling his lessons into his pupil's head. Yet Goku would always stand back up. He never gave up. As Goku's progress continued, something unusual happened. As he attempted to replicate Beerus' Akai energy, he just couldn't figure it out. No matter how hard he tried, he just couldn't replicate that destructive force. Sensing his struggles, Beerus recommends that Goku journey out to the universe in search of answers. As long as he remains as he is now, he will never understand how to use destruction energy. He must find his own path. Goku nods, approaching Whis as usual so they could teleport away, but in a surprise move, the angel declines. He agrees with Lord Beerus. This must be a path only he can discover for himself. The Saiyan didn't know what to say. For as long as he could remember, he had always been with Whis and Beerus. He never once thought about leaving on his own. But if this is what he had to do to discover his own way, then so be it. Goku bids farewell to his masters, promising to come back soon with the answers he needs. And with that, Goku closes his eyes and disappears from sight. Teleporting back to the mortal realm with the divine Kai Kai ability, Goku begins his solo journey through the universe. At first, he did pretty good for himself, following his teachings from Beerus and Whis, Goku deciding to search the cosmos for any planet that needs his attention. To the planets that are desolated and dying, he destroyed them, 
to the planets that were thriving and needed help, he assisted them. As Goku's reputation grew and his notoriety spread, he soon caught the attention of the Galactic Patrol. He makes a good impression on them, especially with the Galactic King. He hears talk about one of the greatest operatives known as Agent Miris, which catches Goku's attention. Maybe he could try fighting this guy. Unfortunately, Agent Miris was on a far away secret mission, so Goku wouldn't be able to fight him anytime soon. Oh well. Goku continues his journey, and with some directions from a patrol agent named Jocko, he finds himself on a new planet that's far, far away, in the outskirts of the universe. If he remembers right, this planet was called Earth, or something like that. Goku teleports straight into a city, but he immediately realizes that something was wrong. This city was in various states of ruin, with many people hurt, scared, and wary of their surroundings. Goku teleporting in was enough to send the few groups of inhabitants to run away in fear. The Saiyan doesn't understand what's going on, until he senses a large mass of key signatures heading his way. He turns around to find himself face to face with a platoon of soldiers wearing a familiar set of armor. Goku couldn't quite remember where he'd seen this before. Goku couldn't quite remember where he'd seen this armor before. They question the Saiyan, asking who he is and why he's here. He does his best to explain that he was here just to visit out of curiosity. They click on their scouters and report their findings to someone on the other end. Goku doesn't understand, but when they offer to escort them to their commander, he agrees to follow them. Maybe this way he could get some answers? As the soldiers and Goku fly out of the city, the gentle Saiyan can only look in as he witnesses many horrible sights. Most of the planet was in various states of ruin and decay. What little native people were left were living in squalor, trapped in perpetual states of fear and hopelessness. What had happened here? The godly warrior soon arrives at the gates of the regal tower where he is greeted by another familiar sight. It was a beautiful man with long green hair. He bowed before introducing himself as Zarbon, the commander of this Frieza outpost for the Frieza Force. So that's what it was, Goku thought. No wonder he recognized their armor. Zarbon requests Lord Goku to follow him inside the tower, once called by the local populace as King's Castle. The commander mentions that he had heard much about Lord Beerus' disciple and his exploits across the universe. He had even bared witness to his legendary fight against Lord Frieza, even if Goku thinks to himself that it wasn't really a fight. He questions why this planet is so torn down and desolate as Zarbon tries his best to explain to the best of his ability. When the Frieza Force first discovered this planet, it was already in this state. For some reason, most of these Earthlings were living under the rule of the savage Namekian known as King Piccolo. He wasn't powerful at all by their standards, but he was stronger than everyone else in this rock. It didn't take much time for the Frieza Force to crush the Namekian and his army of strange spawn. Within no time at all, the planet was under new management. The locals still haven't accepted their new saviors, but Zarbon believes it's only a matter of time until they fully submit to Lord Frieza's will. Goku is quiet for a moment as the commander gives his own question. Why was the disciple of Lord Beerus here of all places? Goku simply responds that he just happened to come here by pure chance. He was doing his duties that Lord Beerus had entrusted him. He was doing his duties that Lord Beerus had entrusted him with, as well as doing some more sightseeing of the universe. Sarbon isn't completely convinced, however. He retaliates to the godly Saiyan that this planet is an official Frieza Force outpost now. It was liberated from an unsightly demon, and Lord Frieza has no intention of harming this world any further. He has marked this as a high priority stake for the Frieza Force, and there is no intention of bringing more harm to it. Goku remains quiet as Zarbon says what the god has been thinking for a while. There is no reason to interfere with this world. If there is anything that Zarbon can do to appease Lord Goku's needs during this visit, then he'd be more than glad to oblige. However, Unless he has any business on this planet, it would be in his best interest to leave. Goku doesn't know what to think, and before long, he excuses himself from the king's castle. It was true, he doesn't have any reason to interfere with this world. It wasn't like the planet was in danger anymore. The Frieza Force was rebuilding it. Nothing needed to be created or destroyed. Surely, he should leave the future of this planet to the mortals. Yet, Goku is still feeling conflicted, deep down inside his soul. 
He knew something was wrong here. He could see it on the looks of the people's faces. Here, they were still suffering. They hadn't been truly freed from the shackles of fear. What should he do now? Leave this planet and let the mortals figure it out? Or intervene despite not needing to? Lord Beerus and Whis would surely have an answer to this situation, for what Goku to do, but he couldn't just ask. He had gone on this journey to find his own answers. He couldn't rely on his masters forever. Goku was so lost in thought, walking further and further towards nowhere, that he didn't even realize he was in the middle of the road. Suddenly, he is struck head-on by a car! Goku doesn't even flinch, standing completely still as the car is utterly totaled. Goku rushes over to apologize profusely to the strange creature. He didn't mean to kill it. A shrill voice rings out as Goku turns around to face a woman with blue hair and a large scowl. Hey you moron! What's wrong with you? Do you know how much that car cost me? Goku had no idea what she was talking about. This poor creature. Was that this car she was talking about? Bulma realizes that this man she hit was completely fine. What the hell? Wait a minute. He isn't one of those alien freaks, wasn't he? Goku admits that yes, he wasn't from this planet. He was just visiting. Bulma's expression immediately changes to one of distrust and disdain. He sure picked a bad time to go sightseeing. This place was in the middle of an invasion, and she needs to leave this city as soon as possible. She had no time to chat anymore. She was wasting time. She needed to get away before they found her. Goku points to the sky asking if those soldier guys were the ones she was talking about. In no time at all, the soldiers surround the pair before Bulma has a chance to run. One of the soldiers announced that she wasn't going anywhere, clicking on their scouter to make a report. The fugitive Bulma briefs had been found. For crimes against Lord Frieza and his empire, she would be sentenced to death. Bulma gulps, but she stands defiantly, declaring that she cannot be captured nor killed. She apologizes to Goku and offers him a chance to run while she distracts these punks. The soldiers fire their blasters, but before Bulma could react with her own gunfire, Goku appears in front of her. He smacks away every single one of the blaster shots, announcing that he won't allow any harm to come to this woman. In a fraction of a second, Goku takes down the soldiers all at once. Bulma couldn't believe her eyes. Why was this alien freak choosing to help her? Goku gives a big, broad smile as he admits that he feels bad for breaking her car creature. To make it up to her, the least he could do was escort her to wherever she needed to go. Bulma's Bulma was skeptical at first, but she admits that if she was to leave for this journey alone, she would definitely have a tough time avoiding the soldiers. And this alien with the weird clothes was really strong. She could use his muscles. Bulma smiles mischievously as she accepts his offer. Without missing a beat, Goku picks up Bulma and flies towards the sky. She shrieks in fright. She wasn't prepared for this. Goku asks where she wants to go as Bulma attempts to give direction. It was hard because of how fast he was flying, but eventually, Goku brought Bulma to where she needed to go. The pair arrived near a house deep in the mountain wilderness. Surrounding the house was various tents full of what seemed like refugees. They were tired, injured, and weary. But once they saw Bulma, they rushed to her with large smiles on their faces. They questioned who this strange man was, but Bulma reassures everyone that this was a friend of hers. She takes out a capsule, clicking it and throwing it to reveal a container of food and supplies. As the refugees shout in joy, Bulma brings Goku to the only house nearby. Inside, they find an old man cooking several giant meals in the kitchen. Bulma introduces Goku to her friend. Son Gohan. The old master is glad to see Bulma safe and sound. He was worried if she'd be able to make it back on her own. Bulma admits she ran into some trouble, but thanks to this alien tourist, she made it out of there with no problems. When Goku introduces himself and reveals, Gohan chuckles. That was a good name. Gohan thanks Goku for helping his friend as he smiles. He just felt it was the right thing to do. Gohan implores Goku to stay for just a bit longer and perhaps enjoy a meal with everyone. Goku happily accepts. He could never reject an offer for food. He helps Gohan hand out food to everyone in the refugee camps outside before eating his own bowl. The food was delicious, perhaps the tastiest meal he'd ever had in his entire life. Master Whis and Beerus would absolutely love this place. After everyone had eaten their meals, 
Bulma and Gohan bring Goku back inside the house. There, Goku asks what was going on with this planet. The Frieza Force said they were liberating this planet, yet he saw that people were clearly still suffering. With a heavy heart, Gohan recounts the history of Earth. Many years ago, an ancient evil known as King Piccolo was reawakened. No one knew how, it just appeared one day to ravage the land, bringing death and despair in its wake. Many virtuous martial artists attempt to stand up against it, but they were swiftly and brutally eliminated. The cities were destroyed, the rural towns were burned, and the living became a daily struggle for survival. The terrible reign of evil lasted for many years, but seemingly out of nowhere, alien visitors from outer space descended from the stars. These aliens were like gods compared to them all. Their advanced technology and their absurd power made them even more powerful than Demon King Piccolo. Pic Piccolo sent his armies to repeal the alien threat, but it was worthless. The demons and King Piccolo himself were soon slain by a white alien with a giant purple gem on his head. The people of Earth cheered, foolishly believing that the nightmare was over. It wasn't. The aliens announced themselves as the Frieza Force, and their lord will be their new ruler. As the invaders began to conquer the planet, a renaissance started to form from the remnants of the enemies of Demon King Piccolo. As the invaders began to conquer the planet, a resistance started to form from the remnants of the enemies of Demon King Piccolo. However, anyone who resisted was swiftly killed. Bulma's own father, Dr. Briefs, was one of the victims of this culling. With their homes destroyed and nowhere else left to turn to, the resistance retreated into the depths of Mount Palzu. There, they encountered the solitary Gohan who offered to help them in whatever way he could. Bulma, as a key member of the resistance, had been attempting to steal tech, food, water, and any other resources that they might need. Many people in the resistance are simple men, women, and children who lost everything in the Demon King Piccolo Wars, those who refused to bow to another vicious monarch. No possessions, no homes, and sometimes, no families. Any martial arts that survived Piccolo's purge were immediately killed by the Frieza Force, including Gohan's old master, Roshi. These mountains were all they had left. Goku is left experiencing an emotion he never quite felt before. A silent rage was building within him as he recalled the looks of fear and hopelessness he saw on the refugees' faces. No. Faces of every Earthling he saw since he's been on this planet. All they wanted was the opportunity to live their lives in peace. They've suffered so much for so long, he thought he had seen everything life could offer him during his training with Beerus and Whis. But this cruelty was something he had never seen before. The suffering of these innocent people stirred his soul. Despite this, he still didn't know if he had the right to intervene. At this moment, Bulma speaks up. She tells Gohan that this Son Goku was the strongest man she'd ever met. He was able to tank a head-on collision with her car like it was nothing, and he blitzed through the Frieza soldiers as if they were wet tissue paper. With his help, they might actually be able to stand a chance against their oppressors. Goku turns to face Gohan, fully expecting him to beg for his help. But, in a move that surprises everyone in the room, Gohan shakes his head. No, they couldn't possibly ask a stranger, a traveler from space with no obligation to help, to fight their battles for them. Instead, a wise old master peers into Goku's eyes and asks if he needs any help. Goku is left there, completely baffled. He's just so confused. Why does he not want his help? No, why does he want to help him? Over a cup of tea, Gohan elaborates. He knows this sounds rather hypocritical given what he just said earlier, but he feels that there is something brewing within Goku's heart. When he looks into his eyes, he sees someone lost, crying out for help. Goku is speechless. He doesn't know what to say. He mentions that he started traveling the universe in order to find out more about himself. He wants to please the masters that raised him and live up to their expectations to find the answers he's been looking for, but here has left him feeling more confused. Ever. Gohan smiles brightly as he places his hand on Goku's shoulder. He beseeches him to listen to his heart, to look inward and reflect. He believes that Goku is a good man. He saw it when he witnessed Goku go out of his way to help feed all those refugees. He tells Goku to leave this planet and be safe. If at least one person can escape Frieza's tyranny, then that is enough for him. Goku cannot understand why this complete stranger is going so far out of his way to understand him and his needs before his own. Bulma tries to argue with Gohan. They need Goku's strength, or else they're doomed. Yet Gohan would not relent on his option. 
Yet Gohan would not relent on his opinions. Goku looks up at the old man, feeling a connection between each other that he never thought he could have with anyone besides his masters. If he left him, Bulma, and everyone in their camp to their fate, he doesn't think he'd ever be able to live with himself. However, before Goku could say anything, the godly Saiyan bolted up. He could feel it. There are many key signatures heading straight here. Bulma couldn't believe it. How could the Frieza Force have found them? She had built a jamming device to mask their presence from their scouters. Were they somehow followed? They should have been more careful. The three exit the home to discover a swarm of soldiers with their blasters aimed at the entire refugee camp. At their head was Zarbon, who quickly started to panic upon seeing Goku. He instructed Lord Goku to step aside. This was a dangerous band of treasonous rebels that needed to be eliminated. Gohan got into a battle stance as Bulma pulled out her pistol, declaring that they would never allow any harm to come to these innocents. Gohan shouts at Goku to run while he still can. They would handle these goons. Even if they die today, at least they'll know they died fighting for what was right. Goku sees the expressions of terror etched on the faces of every single refugee. And, despite it all, the determination in their eyes as they hold up their pots, pans, and any other makeshift weapons they could find. As Goku looks over to Bulma and Gohan, he can't feel nothing but admiration for all these people who, despite not being that strong physically, absolutely refuse to stand down in the face of overwhelming odds. Time seems to slow as Goku panics internally. What should he do? He can't let these people die, yet he couldn't interfere in the lives of mortals, right? At that moment, Goku recalls an old memory from his youth when he was traveling the universe with Beerus and Whis, following a visit to a planet where the people feared the God of Destruction. Goku had asked Lord Beerus if he ever felt bad about how other people thought of him. Beerus had laughed in his face, wiping the tears from his face as he told the boy that a god shouldn't be held down by the mere words of mortals. No, a god should simply follow their own code and do what they feel is right. Gods don't need to follow the rules of mortals. Right and wrong, it doesn't matter. A true god chooses while the weak obey. If there is something he wants, he simply takes it. Nothing more, nothing less. It is at that moment that Goku makes a decision. He steps forward, holding his arm to the side as he tells Gohan and Bulma to step back. He thanks them for their hospitality and for helping clear his head. He'll defeat these guys in a flash. Zarbon yells out hysterically that he has no right to do so. He was a god. He was told gods couldn't interfere in the affairs of mortals. Even Gohan, unsure to what this talk about gods was about, asks if he's sure about this. Goku smirks, stating confidently that he would listen to his heart. He wasn't doing this for them, he was doing it for himself. Goku announces that as a candidate in training for the God of Destruction, he would help the people of Earth no matter what. Zarbon shouts to his troops to fire. They could at least kill some of these pathetic vermin while they were here. Yet, their shots are instantly eradicated. Goku held up his hand, forming his fingers as if he was holding a gun, before firing a barrage of key blasts. Each blast not only destroyed the blast from the guns, they also spun toward each soldier. In a matter of seconds, the entire regiment of soldiers are wiped out. Zarbon, Bulma, and Gohan couldn't believe what they had just seen. Zarbon bulks into his monstrous state and attempts to flee, but as he turns around, he's left standing face to face with Goku. The god frowns in displeasure, pointing his palm at the petrified Zarbon. A key blast forms inches from the commander's face. Goku demands to know where Frieza was. If he tells him and he promises to leave Earth immediately, he'd let him live. At first, Zarbon tries to feign ignorance. Why would Frieza be at this dirt ball located in the boonies? However, Goku wasn't buying it. He had heard it from Gohan himself. Frieza had come to personally subjugate this planet. There must be a reason for that. Not only that, Goku could sense other relatively high power levels on the planet. If this planet was so worthless, then why were there so many powerful mortals here? Frieza must still be here. Zarbon ultimately relents begging for his life as he reveals the truth. When this planet was initially discovered, it was treated as a low-value target, until their scouts discovered something odd. Something so valuable that Frieza, upon learning of it, decided to launch a full-scale operation of the planet with himself leading its operation. Zarbon himself wasn't even aware of the true nature of this something, only hearing from Frieza that it was capable of making his lord far, far stronger than ever. Four. Goku karate chops Sarbon in the neck, immediately knocking him out before tossing him to Gohan. He promised that he would stop Frieza. He did it once before, and he could do it again. Goku rockets away as Gohan and Bulma are left there dumbstruck. Yet, they also feel something they hadn't felt in a very long time. Hope. 
In the skies, Goku searches for the key presence of those strong mortals he'd felt before. He manages to track them down, arriving at the top of a massive tower in the middle of a forest. Once there, he discovers a group of Frieza Force soldiers playing a game of Go Fish, along with what looked like a cat in a cage. The soldiers look over at Goku and chuckle. They had no idea that there were still Earthlings left on this planet capable of fighting. Goku asks if any of them happens to know where Lord Frieza was, but they all laughed. One of them, a purple alien with a bizarre head, let this punk know that they would never betray their lord and reveal his location. Looks like they needed to kill this earthling for not knowing his place. They were itching for a good battle. The five soldiers gathered together, posing triumphantly as they announced themselves as the mighty Ginyu Force. However, before the Ginyu Force could even figure out who would fight this intruder first, Goku appears before them in a flash. None of them could even comprehend how fast he was. Goku apologizes for interrupting, but he was in a hurry, extending his hands out and launching a pair of key blasts. The force of the key strike was so intense, it instantly knocked out the entire Ginyu force and destroyed a portion of the tower. The soldiers were sent flying out of the tower, plummeting down towards the forest. Goku sighs deeply. He should have asked them some more questions. Now, he doesn't have any more leads. He couldn't detect Frieza's key anywhere around here. Maybe he really wasn't on Earth anymore? As Goku is left pondering, a voice rings out across the air as it states that Frieza was here alright. Goku blinks, looking over to the caged cat. The feline tells Goku to stop staring at him so intensely as Goku jumps in surprise. It really was a talking cat. He'd never seen one of those before. Somewhere out in space, Beerus sneezes. The cat shouts out to the mysterious war to shut up and listen. His name was Korin, and he was the guardian of this tower before it got taken over by Frieza and his goons. Goku perks up, asking the cat if he had any idea where Frieza was. Korin nods, but he'd only tell him if he let him out of this cage. Goku nearly falls to the floor in disbelief, but he obliges. Bending the cage's bars open, Korin thanks Goku, clearing his throat before pointing up. Frieza was above the tower and beyond the clouds. He was in the heavenly realm of the lookout, God's sanctuary. Goku couldn't believe that there was a god on this planet, but Korin shakes his head. There used to be a god, but he's long gone now. All that's left is that monster. Korin instructs Goku to continue flying upwards past the clouds into focus. That's where he'd find Frieza. Goku thanks the cat, jumping off the tower and flying upwards beyond the clouds as Korin wishes him luck. He was this world's only hope. Goku continues flying past the clouds until, suddenly, he sees it. A massive, floating structure was above the veil. Goku lands on the lookout, looking around for any signs of Frieza. The place looked completely deserted. However, a groan is heard as Goku rushes to the palace in the center of the lookout. He discovers an injured man with a turban lying on the ground. As Goku asks the man what happened, he can only mutter that he was sorry. He should have died with Kami, but instead, he was beaten by that monster and showed him that room. There was no hope for anyone now. They were doomed. The strange man begs Goku to run away and never look back. A calamity never before seen would befall this world. Before Goku could ask him what he was talking about, he felt it. A massive power, unlike anything he'd ever felt before, was suddenly rising from within the palace. Goku's heart begins to race as he holds on to Popo, covering him as an enormous explosion destroys the entire lookout. As the smoke cleared, Goku could see who it was. From out of the rubble emerged none other than Frieza. The monarch stretched his neck. Goku was left stunned. His power was absurd, incomparable to how it used to be. Frieza notices Goku standing in front of him, and with his mouth agape, the Emperor laughs. He was so delighted to see him again, and so soon too! What perfect timing. This saves him the effort of seeking him out. Goku was absolutely flabbergasted. He just couldn't believe how powerful Frieza had gotten in such a short amount of time. Frieza chuckles, offering to humor this monkey before he dies. During his search of this planet, he had discovered this strange building along with its greatest secret. Within was a room where the flow of time worked differently. A day on the outside world was an entire year inside the room. Realizing how valuable this room was, Frieza took it upon himself to colonize this planet as a high value asset, killing its previous demon king and letting his soldiers run the world while he trained inside this room for a whole 10 years. Frieza states that he had to reduce himself to training like a mere commoner. He hated this, but what he hated more than anything was this filthy Saiyan monkey that had defeated him, that humiliated him beyond anything he had ever experienced in his life. He had never trained a day in his life before, but in order to gain the power necessary to kill Goku, he is perfectly willing to train for as long as it takes. 
in order to have his revenge for the humiliation he has suffered. And now, he believes he finally has that power. Frieza powers up, and it's so intense, the entire heavenly realm shakes. No, not just his realm. The entire planet was shaking violently. It was on the verge of splitting apart. It was an ebony display, the dark sheen of the Emperor glistening in the sun. Black Frieza had arrived, and Goku can't believe how strong he was. His strength was unfathomable, unreachable. He honestly had no idea if he can even face Frieza now, but at the same time, Goku had never felt more excited in his entire life. This was going to be his very first, and possibly his last, life or death battle. He would make sure to save her. Black Frieza declares that he will make Goku beg for death as a Saiyan retorts, saying that he'd like to see him try. Without any more words to say, the battle begins between Goku and Frieza. Frieza has the upper hand as his power was absolute. In contrast, Goku is forced to be defensive as he can't keep up with Frieza's speed. Frieza gloats that after he's done killing him, he will go after those foolish rebels next. Then, when he has no more use for this pitiful rock, he'll destroy it before going off to kill Lord Beerus. Despite the immense pain he feels, Goku still manages to find the energy to chuckle. He doesn't think that Frieza is strong enough to handle Lord Beerus quite yet. Goku charges his key, unleashing his full power as he recalls everything he's ever learned about fighting from recent Beerus. The crimson aura of Super Saiyan God envelops his body as Goku charges at Frieza. The battle becomes more intense as the entire planet becomes their battleground. Entire cities and countries are destroyed in nanoseconds in the wake of their battle. At one point, the fight is taken to Mount Paozu as Frieza pounds Goku through one of the mountains, instantly disintegrating it as he crashes through the forest. Goku struggles to get up when his stomach drops. Oh no. He had returned to the deepest peaks of Mount Paozu. He was back at the resistance camp. The refugees look on in shock and terror as they see their hero struggling to get up. Bulma and Gohan, who were rounding up the last of the nearby Frieza Force soldiers, head over to Goku and ask what was wrong, yet they are told to stay back. Goku yells at everyone to run, to get away from here as fast as they can. Frieza was coming, but it was too late. Frieza stands smugly over Goku, pointing his finger at him as a beam charges at its tip. He has grown tired of this facade of a fight. It was time to end this. However, the Emperor is taken aback when an old man suddenly appears before Goku with his arms outstretched. He tells Frieza not to take another step. He wouldn't allow him to harm the hero anymore. Bulma and Goku yell at Gohan to get out of here, as Frieza can only look on in amusement. He chortles in glee. What did this worm think he could possibly do to him? If he wanted to die first, then he should have at least said so. At this moment, as Frieza prepares to kill Gohan, Goku resolves to end this demon forever. For the first time in his life, he wanted to completely and utterly destroy someone. Goku jumps back, catching Frieza off guard as he strikes him in the chest with his elbow. Goku attempts to charge every ounce of destruction energy he could muster and condense it into his hand, remembering everything that he had learned from Beerus. This had to work this time. It absolutely had to. Goku unleashes his Akai as the blast expands, consuming Frieza as he screams in pain. Goku and his allies cheer. He had done it! Yet, their jubilation slowly morphs into despair. Somehow, Frieza was able to resist the destructive power of Akai. Goku watches on in fear and disbelief as he witnesses Frieza counteract the Akai through sheer strength and force of will. He was stunned. This had never happened before. Through intense effort, Frieza pants as he holds the Akai sphere in his hand. The satisfied look on his face, Frieza offers to return this wonderful gift back to his center. Frieza throws the Kai Sphere straight towards Goku. The Saiyan, still stunned at what he just saw, isn't sure what to do. If he get hit, he'll surely be erased. But if he dodges, and that attack strikes anything nearby, such as mountain or trees, the entire planet would be erased. However, as Goku braces for impact to protect the Earth, something else happens. Goku gasps as Son Gohan jumps forward taking the full force of the Kai Blast in Goku's stead. The god could only watch on in horror as Gohan's body starts to fade away. Goku cries out to Gohan. What has he done? He doesn't understand why Gohan was willing to go so far for him. A stranger he just met that day. However, as his body continues to be eaten away by pure destruction, Gohan smiles warmly as he replies that he doesn't need a reason. You're a good man. I wanted to protect you. That's all the reason I need. 
As his body nears the end of Erasure, Gohan requests to Goku to beat this bully Frieza real good. He asks Goku to protect the planet he has loved so much. But more than that, he tells Bulma and Goku to take care of themselves and lead long, healthy lives. The pair let out tears of pure sadness as Son Gohan, the greatest martial artist the Earth has ever known, is erased from existence. A silence breaks across the mountainside, which is soon broken by the maniacal laughter of Frieza. That buffoon got himself to race for no good reason. What a fool! However, that laughter slowly fades as Frieza notices something unsettling. Bulma and the rest of the refugees realize that Goku is shaking. The clouds are becoming dark, and the lightning is dancing across the blackening skies. An unyielding rage was burning throughout Goku as his crimson, godly aura was twisting and turning. Its bright red color is morphing, shifting into a greenish hue. Goku snarls that Gohan hadn't done anything wrong. He was a gentle old man who only wanted to help people. All he ever wanted was peace, and now he couldn't even enjoy the peace of the afterlife. He was erased into nothingness. The kindest, warmest man he'd ever met was robbed of his eternal paradise because of Frieza and himself. If he just knew how to control the Sakai energy, Gohan, Gohan would still be alive. Goku swears to himself that he would make Frieza pay. And then Goku snaps. His greenish aura erupts towards the heavens as he roars. The entire planet, no, the entire galaxy shakes from the pressure. Emerald aura morphs into a bluish hue as Goku's eyes flash. Frieza is left staring with a single sweat drop falling from his face. Bulma quietly whispers Goku's name as we see the brilliant cerulean blaze of a godly Super Saiyan God. This was the beginning of the Super Saiyan God awakening the powers of a Super Saiyan. Frieza is momentarily stunned at the amount of power Kakarot is radiating. Goku warns Bulma to take the survivors and get away. He doesn't know if he'll be able to contain his emotions any longer. Bulma nods, wiping the tears from her eyes as she tells Goku to make Frieza pay. Frieza himself takes offense to the statement, pointing his finger straight at Bulma to fire a death beam. In an instant, his finger is grabbed and broken by Goku as he cries out in pain. Goku tells Frieza that he thinks they should take this battle outside. With a mighty jump that nearly knocks the planet out of orbit, Kakarot tackles Frieza into space, taking the battle far, far away from Earth. The combatants soon find themselves in the middle of the known universe where, as far as Goku was aware, no planets existed. Forming a dense barrier of ki around himself, Goku is glad to see that Frieza hasn't died from the vacuum of space. He'd be able to enjoy this battle a little longer then. He lets Frieza know that this would be where they finish their battle, perfect spot where no one else could get hurt, where they could fight to their heart's content. Frieza coughs, wiping the blood from his mouth as he promises to use his full power, no more holding back. He was sick and tired of this monkey who refused to know his place. As Frieza's anger and power soars to unseen heights, Goku responds in turn. He vows that in the name of Son Gohan and Lord Beerus, he would annihilate him with no mercy. The two forces of nature clash once more as the shockwaves of their strike shakes the entire universe multiple times. It was clear that Goku had become much more powerful with his new transformation. It seemed that he and Frieza were dead even in regards to their strength. Their clashes are so powerful and freaking, a massive black hole unlike any other seen before was created. Goku and Frieza aren't able to escape from its oppressive grip as they are sucked inside. Yet, despite being torn apart by its pressure, Goku and Frieza continue fighting within it. From afar, two figures stand by watching the battle unfold. Beerus and Whis had detected this absurd battle earlier and appeared to spectate it in case things got out of hand. Beerus speaks up, asking Whis who he thinks will win. Whis shrugs his shoulders. He honestly doesn't know. Their power, their experience, their skills, and their determination were essentially dead even. It could go either way, but more importantly, the appearance of this uber black hole was starting to pull in nearby galaxies. If this didn't end soon, it could mean the end of Universe 7. Whis asks his lord if they should intervene, but Beerus Jesus. This was Goku's fight. He wouldn't step in no matter what happened. Yet, Whis could see the sweat dripping from his face and the tapping of his fingers. Beerus was extremely anxious. All they could do was stand back and hope that Goku would prevail. Back inside the black hole, the battle reaches its apex as Goku and Frieza continue to clash despite being torn apart. Their bodies were twisting and contorting. They wouldn't be able to survive in this environment for much longer. 
Frieza fires several death beams which swirl around and scatter through the black hole. They manage to strike Goku, breaking his legs and one of his arms in the process. Despite the dire circumstances and the indescribable pain, Goku refuses to die. It was up to him to carry on the will of his masters and son Gohan. He couldn't afford to lose. Goku charges his energy once more, its brilliant light glowing bright despite being sucked further into the void. The god declares that this last attack would decide everything. Within the black hole, Goku vows to give everything he's got into his final move. Frieza growls, splattering that it was time for the gods to perish in his presence. They would all die by his hands. In a dramatic charge, the two warriors launch themselves forward as they continue contorting and distorting into unrecognizable shapes, their fists managing to collide as the pair transcend their limits. The black hole expands massively and nearly collapses as the force of this clash almost outdoes the unimaginable pressure of this hole. Finally, Beerus wonders if they should intervene now, if only to prevent this supermassive black hole from consuming the entire universe. However, Beast tells his lord to wait a moment. Inside the black hole, something happened. The entire event was sparking, almost as if it was disappearing. Goku had imbued his fist in the energy of the destroyers. As Frieza and the surrounding distorted space, the black hole started to get erased. Frieza cries out in fear, screaming out for Goku's blood as the space around them starts to return to normal. Goku can only look on with a look of disappointment spread over his face. Despite everything he had done, he lamented that this would be the end of Frieza. Goku had never fought someone as powerful talented as Frieza before. His potential was insane. It was such a waste that his life had to end here. It's a shame, but I can't allow you to live. Goodbye, Frieza. Damn you, Goku! Frieza spent his final moments cursing Goku's name until he was completely and utterly vanquished. Frieza and the black hole they had created dissipated into nothingness. Finally, peace had returned to the universe. Who drops out of his Super Saiyan Blue state, drifting across the vacuum of space as his key barrier nearly disappears. But he is quickly caught by none other than his master, Lord Beerus. Goku chuckles, asking if he made him proud. Beerus smiles softly as he whispers that he sure did. He did a damn good job. Whis heals Goku with a tap of his staff as he congratulates his pupil as well. Perhaps it was time for them all to return home? Goku thanks them both, but he can't actually go with them just yet. He has some unfinished business to attend to. Maybe they can get a bite to eat while they're at it? Whis and Beerus raise an eyebrow. Was there somewhere with good food that Goku had in mind? The Saiyan laughs. He sure did. It didn't take long for Goku to return to Earth with Beerus and Whis. They had arrived at Mount Pauzu, where Goku reunites with Bulma, letting her know that Frieza was defeated, Gohan was avenged, and they could all live in peace now. The entire resistance cheered for what felt like the first time in many years. Bulma cries in relief, hugging Goku and thanking him profusely. She didn't know how to thank him, but Goku just said that all she has to do is give him and her masters a good meal. From here, things began to move quickly. The remaining Frieza Force soldiers that had remained on the planet were rounded up by Goku, who gave them the offer to either leave the planet forever or be erased. Leaderless and without much of a choice, the invaders departed Earth. The resistance announced the liberation of Earth on the remnants of their race radio and television systems as the news soon spread all over the world. Celebrations were held, which Goku, Whis, and Beerus greatly enjoyed. In fact, Beerus and Whis enjoyed the food so much, they decided to help out in the reconstruction efforts if it meant even more dishes they could try. In record time, the cities, towns, mountains, and plains were restored to their former glory. Goku made sure to bring life back to this planet in order to honor his promise to Gohan. Whis and Beerus could only look on proudly at their pupil. He had come so far. Goku was now fully capable of both creation and destruction. He had found the answer he had been looking for. On their final day on Earth, Goku and Bulma finished preparing a small shrine on Mount Pauzu at Gohan's old home. They finished their prayers as Whis and Beerus arrived. It was time for them to leave. Bulma wonders if they really had to go as Goku nods. The universe is a big place and it really needs them. But he tells her not to worry. He'll come back as soon as he can. Maybe next time he can take her exploring with him across the stars. Bulma smiles widely. That'd be a lot of fun with the capsules full of takeout food as gifts. The gods depart Earth in a massive pillar of light. As they travel through the light, Whis asks Goku how he feels as he snickers. He felt good. He thinks he finally understands what it means to be a god. To be a god meant being true to yourself and using your powers as you see fit. And to Goku, that meant helping those in need and refusing to bow down to threats to the universe he now loved. Both Whis and Beerus smile. That was a pretty good answer if they do say so themselves. With growling bellies and food on their mind, the angel and his two gods of destruction return back home. And so, 
More time passes. Whis and Beerus both agreed that they could trust Goku to continue playing a more active role as a god of destruction in training, allowing him to take on more tasks and responsibilities on his own. Goku was more than willing and capable of keeping peace in the universe. It didn't take long for Goku to encounter the remnants of the Frieza Force, although he was surprised to see that they had a new leader, Vegeta. One of the few remaining Saiyan survivors had decided to take advantage of the power vacuum left by Frieza and take over the Frieza Force. Goku had honestly forgotten all all about the Saiyans which upset them greatly. One of them was his brother for crying out loud, but no matter, they had discovered a legendary power during their intense training sessions that pushed them far beyond the limits of any normal Saiyan. With Raditz and Nappa by his side, Vegeta renamed the Force to be the Vegeta Force. This would be the first step of their brand new Super Saiyan Empire. The trio of Saiyans transform into Super Saiyans, confident they could finally defeat Kakarot. However, their hope was short-lived as they were easily tossed around and defeated. Goku even even realized that he had a similar transformation, bursting into Super Saiyan Blue. His hair wasn't yellow, but it was pretty similar. Feeling utterly defeated in every sense of the word, the Saiyans didn't even know what to do anymore. Goku decided to give them an offer. If they promised not to harm anyone else, and they relocated to a planet called Earth to train the people there, he'd be more than willing to train them on how to achieve further heights of power. They immediately accepted, as Vegeta disbanded the Vegeta Force. In a matter of weeks, the Super Saiyan Empire was over just as quickly as it started. On Earth, Goku was pleased pleased to see how well it was doing. The Saiyans, eager to train with the strongest Saiyan god in existence, quickly assimilated to life on Earth. They became instructors for a new generation of Earthling warriors. Goku kept a close friendship with Bulma over the years as she became closer with Vegeta of all people. Raditz and Nappa never settled down, choosing to remain bachelors and focus on more mundane yet fulfilling hobbies such as gardening and pottery. Yet, out of the three Saiyans, Goku had the highest expectations for Vegeta. He had a lot of potential and he believed he might one day be able to reach his level. It was during one of these training sessions with the Saiyans one day that the Supreme Kai, Shin, arrived to visit Goku. He had come to warn Goku of an evil wizard Babidi and his plans to revive an ancient evil known as Majin Buu. Goku thanks him for the warning as he prepares to defend Earth. Shortly thereafter, Babidi arrives on the planet. However, when his spaceship touches down on the ground and Babidi unearths Buu's egg, the wizard is ambushed. Goku had warned the forces of Earth, joining Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz, and their disciples as they surrounded the spaceship. The Saiyans and their pupils launch a surprise attack as Goku rushes towards Buu's egg. With a mighty Hakai, the egg containing Majin Buu is erased within seconds. With the egg destroyed, Goku sat back and watched as the Saiyans and their pupils eliminated Babidi, Deborah, and the rest of their soldiers. Goku was glad to see everyone's progress. He didn't have to worry about the Earth anymore. There was a whole new generation of warriors ready to defend it. Yet, this wasn't the last of Goku's worries. When the primordial magician Moro escapes from the galactic patrol prison, Goku is the first person the patrol contacts. Goku is glad to see his old friend Jocko once again when he is introduced to Agent Miris. He could tell right away he was an angel just like Whis. Miris is forced to pull Goku aside and beg him not to reveal his secret. He was indeed an angel and a brother to Whis. He wanted to keep his cover as a mortal a little longer, so he continued working alongside them. Goku understands and accepts, leaving with Miris to Planet Namek where they encounter Moro. Goku, who had been tracking Moro's energy for a while now, is well aware of how dangerous the wizard truly is. Rather than listen to his sane instincts for a good battle, Goku follows his duty and chooses to eliminate Moro as quickly as possible. Moro doesn't even have a chance to absorb any energy, as he is quickly hakaied into nothingness. Planet is saved, as Miris thanks Goku for such splendid work. Goku begs to fight him, but Miris declines. He can't use any of his angel powers while he is in the realm of mortals. However, he promises to meet Goku again, and departs back to the Galactic Patrol HQ. Goku continues exploring the universe, bringing life and destruction to many planets that Beerus had neglected over the years. He soon arrives to one such desolate planet filled with massive spiders and worm beasts. However, what Goku didn't expect to find were two more Saiyan survivors, Paragus and Broly. The pair were cautious around Goku, but he didn't seem to mind. In fact, Goku offered to bring them to a safe planet where he knows the food is plentiful and there aren't that many giant, dangerous animals. Paragus immediately accepts the offer, wagering that anywhere else was better than here. However, he asks Goku where his spaceship might be. The godly Saiyan merely places his hands on the shoulders of the two before instantly teleporting to Earth. The father and son couldn't believe what just happened. One moment they were on Vampa, and now they were somewhere else completely. Goku brings them over to Bulma.
Bulma's renovated Capsule Corp building in West City to introduce them to the three Saiyans he's found. Goku introduces them to Nappa, Raditz, and Paragus's eyes widen in anger the moment he sees Prince Vegeta. Without hesitation, Paragus orders Broly to attack Vegeta. Goku wasn't expecting this, but Vegeta seemed to have this handled, so he might let them fight for a while. It was abundantly clear to everyone that Broly was incredibly powerful, far stronger than they could have ever imagined. In his wrathful state, he was able to easily overpower Vegeta in both Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2 state. Nappa and Raditz jump in to assist the prince, but despite bursting into Super Saiyan as well, they were no match for Broly. However, the wild Saiyan was starting to lose control and his erratic key was putting the city in danger. With a 1-inch punch from Goku, Broly is completely knocked out. Paragus is reprimanded as Goku demands an explanation. Paragus reveals the truth behind Broly's exile to the old King Vegeta, and how it was that the thought of revenge on the royal family was what kept him going during his time on Vampa. The old general is told to let go of his grudges or else he will be taken back to Vampa, forcibly separated from his son. Paragus sees the serious expression on Goku's face as he realizes that he really would do this. He ultimately relents as he does not want to be imprisoned once again, or worse. Goku sighs in relief, glad to see that Paragus was willing to see reason. He never doubted Broly, but he could tell he had a rather gentle soul. While Paragus and Broly were given a home in West City, Goku decided that he would take both Vegeta and Broly with him to Beerus's planet from time to time. He believed that they would gain much more efficient training here than on Earth. Perhaps they could possibly become Super Saiyan gods like Goku did long ago. Vegeta and Broly's new training regiment begins as they grow exponentially in power. Broly and Paragus soon get used to their new lives on Earth, and Vegeta and Bulma, who had been seeing each other for years by this point, prepared to get married soon. Goku was glad to see his friends on Earth live and prosper, just like Gohan would have wanted. In his own life, Goku was now in the final stages of his destruction training. Back on Beerus' planet, Beerus and Whis would evaluate Kakarot's progress. He had done remarkably well in the past few decades, safeguarding the universe and performing his duties admirably. He had done so well, in fact, that there were more planets with life on it before he had started his God of Destruction training. For the first time in untold millennia, Universe 7's mortal levels had increased. There would need to be an official ritual done, and he would need to be introduced to the gods of the multiverse. But for now, Beerus appoints Kakarot as the next God of of destruction. However, the cat reminds his pupil that he still has a long way to go before he can even think about beating him. Goku chuckles before smirking smugly. He powers up to his Super Saiyan Blue state, asking if he'd like to prove that. Beerus chuckles as his aura expands. Was this a rematch? Goku nods with confidence. It sure was. As we smiles on, he reminds the two not to fight so hard or they'll ruin the whole planet. Beerus and Goku stare each other down as the former God of Destruction recalls the vision he had so many years ago. That prophecy of a Super Saiyan God that would one day become his rival. Who could have known how much of that single dream would change his life? Wasting no more time, the two gods clash fists once again, their rivalry igniting and burning forevermore. <laughs>